What's happening, y'all? You know who it is. Been kind of busy uh, doing some things. So um, just a quick update on this. This is not exciting, obviously. Um, but I'll show you what I got going on here. Um, I basically had to build, uh, just to show you what took me so long to do another video. I, I, I built one cabinet and I was gonna get it powder coated. I, I never powder coat the bottom, not anymore. Um, so I just kind of cleaned this up, polished it up and um, dropped the power supplies directly on it, like so, all right? All right, so uh, let me explain what I got going on here. I guess the best way to explain it is to turn it around. This is actually the back, obviously. And, damn, this is the front. So what I'm doing is um, on my, um, my last couple of LD MOSs I did, I didn't put these holes here. I just kind of did some Swiss cheese on front and Swiss cheese in the back. Um, this, I still, do, I still do this thing in the back. This is the, uh, the back of it. It has nice, clean, chrome fan guards right there. Um, this is where the, the input power comes in, and this is where information comes from the bottom out for metering, um, screens, all kind of weird shit, all right? So, um, yeah. Easy, easy, easy. But this looked like garbage on the front of the amplifier, so I did not do that this time. And uh, let me see if I can find a front for you. I wanted, this is the front of the power supply only, FYI. All right, so. Here's the front, nice and clean, All right? You have the two uh, rocker switches. One is to turn the power on, right there. And the other one is to switch from reading temperature on your LDMOS devices, all four of them. You can switch from that to voltage if you really need to see that you have 50 volts on the BLF 188s <laughs> or 65 volts on the, uh, what is it, MRF X 1K 80H. All right. And obviously a couple of LEDs and the rest of this is just mounting holes. So that's, that's it's keeping it real simple because you got to be able to say Skullcracker on it. That's why I did that. The front of the RF deck is totally different. I'm making these two pieces. Why? Because I'm going to tell you that in a second. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So anyway, back to this. I'm talking while I'm doing something else. Um, make sure I don't drop these plates on the floor. Okay. So, regular closed front. Air slides under here. You see the feet. Air slides under here. These, obviously, this is the back. I mean, the front of the power supply as far as air is concerned. This pulls and pushes out of the back end. So the air comes up, pulls through, comes out the back. I've already tried it um, on my, uh, my four transistor LD MOS that it's a one piece unit, same bottom on it. Um, good ground, I, that's why I kept it bare. You're not gonna see it anyway, because it's gonna be in a rack. Or if, even if it's sitting on your desk, you won't see it. So that's enough for that. I want to talk to you guys about where I'm going next. Um, not that you care, but if you tuned in, you might want to hear it. I don't know. So this is not new to me. The four, then the eight. I have a question. What do you think it would take to run these things old school style? And what I mean by old school style not this, not key in a thousand and peak in the four or peak in the five or whatever. But I'm talking about real hammers. You know, like 10 bushels and, uh, and moving forward to about 16 bushels RMS, which will peak you at about 40, somewhere in there. 40 bushels. So basically, 10KW dead hammer. I don't mean 10KW going, you know, 2,000. Ah, no, 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 no. I'm talking about squeeze mic. 
pink, 10,000. Sitting still. Then when you talk, then when you talk, you start to see it go, well, let's see, I gotta go your direction. You're looking at me from this way. Oh yeah, so this, <laughs> this will be your forward, I guess. I think I got that right, but you know what I mean. And I'm trying to figure out, what would it take to make something that um, is, is super comfortable with, that, with a carrier that size? So let me know what you think. I know the first question is, how do you cool it? How do you cool it? Well, that ain't new either. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, hold on a second. Anybody knows me knows. I've been doing this a while. Let's move this out the way. So water cooling is obviously going to be um, an option. Probably the only option at that level, unless you want a gigantic box full of heat sink. So, you know, we got... You know, water blocks, um, I have one of the uh, 300 volt uh, VD moss with a water block. It's not even a water block, it's just a piece of aluminum slab with a hole cut going in and just turn around and going back out. That ain't, that ain't gonna work when you try to do a bunch of them. Here's what I'm gonna go with. It's kind of used because I've been using it. I've used it before to make sure. That's it. Um, at first, I thought I could only cool one transistor with it, which would have been kind of stupid. But actually, from your way, that's the input. Can you see what it's doing there? Input comes in and splits. All right? Up, down. Up, down. Up, down. And up and out the other side. Does the same thing on both sides. This unit here can easily cool two transistors easily. So what I did to make sure of that, these boards I had made not even with this in mind. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I designed them just pretty basic. Excuse this one with the extra holes in it, but I didn't feel like opening up a new pack. You see where I'm going, y'all? Oh, shit. All right? And I know you guys see the overhang, and you're like, yeah, it has overhang, though, bro. That's all right. All right? The overhang's going to help us. All right, now. Transistor, transistor. Spreader, I'm gonna do a spreader that's probably big enough to come all the way out here, right? Not that we need to, but I'm gonna tell you why. What I wanna do is, and I'm trying to figure this out, so if you got some ideas, let me know. I got two ideas. One would be to literally use these mounting holes, one, two, three, well, two, four, six, eight. And of course we can go 10 and 12 and stand it up off of the ground. But because it's water cooled, you, see, you should be trying to save real estate. And I'll tell you why on, in a minute, you probably already figured that out. So let's take these off for a minute just so I can finish explaining it to you. So how do you maximize, let me, let me, let me grab something for you. I'm going to grab the bottom of a, of a four transistor unit. Hold on a second. OK, so I got a piece of metal here. Um, this is one of the bottoms. I haven't cleaned it up yet, but don't worry about that. OK, this is the bottom of the RF side. A lot of room. I could shorten this if I wanted to. But do I really want to? Check me out, y'all. So what I had here is this was real deep. I, I can probably bring this down on the water cooler. I don't know if you can see these six holes right here. One, I mean, two, four, six. This is where the pallet sat. Heat sink, heat sink for the second pallet. Each pallet held two, uh, two boards. So I'm calling this a pallet, but it's really two pallets, two pallets, but they're on one heat sink. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then those two pallets, 
Uh, I don't have the part. But anyway, the ass end of the box, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, um, allows the, the air to come down and blow out of the back. I was initially thinking the board sit on top, bring the spreader out, bolt it down, bolt it down. All right, and you can probably do that one, two, three, four, whatever. That's okay. But what if you shorten all of this? and did this. You see where I'm going? Two. Let's, uh, I'll take the top of this thing. You know, four, six. You see where I'm going? Eight. <laughs> and you don't need a lot of air, right? Now, I could keep it this wide, this long, I mean, this deep. Why? Because two, four, six, eight combiners. What y'all think, man? That's an idea. I can probably get more than that in here. Let's say I don't put the combiner in here and I do like I'm gonna do on the air cool, which is combined outside. Two, uh, two four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now, I'm probably going off the deep end here. You know, I'm being real. I, this is probably complete bullshit. But I'm trying. I, I, I got a feeling that this is going to work. Um, it doesn't leak. I've tried it. It has, a, it has a rubber gasket inside, so it doesn't leak at all. Um, probably got to change this gasket every so often, I'm assuming. Um, if I mount it this way, Less of a problem. Obviously, if I mount it that way, that gasket better be good. Yeah. Not that there's high voltage in here, but still. I don't want my customer calling me talking about, dude, my, my box is urinating. So that's the idea. That's what I want to do. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Can you imagine all that power in, in that little small piece of real estate and only being, well, what are these? Roughly six inches, so, you know, call it seven to eight inches high. Oh, one other thing I forgot. Everybody's asking, what are you going to use? What kind of, how are you going to cool the water off? So what I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm going to pick this up and take a little walk with you guys just for a hot second. If I can not knock off, knock down everything in my room trying to do it. All right. That right there is the answer. This is a baby. Yes, it costs a lot of money, but we're talking about somebody who wants a massive hammer. All right? So um, one of these right here cools four easily. <laughs> easily. Not a lot of water flow, but it's a chiller. This is not... Uh, a passive, not a radiator, not a passive radiator. It doesn't, don't get me wrong. Is it overkill? Yes, really. Keeping them at room temperature, A, you know. But I'm a brat, and um, I use one of these on my other setup, as some of you know, some of you don't. Um, it works pretty good. This is a little small version of what I'm already using, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, all right, you guys, give me some thoughts, give me some opinions. You know, um, it's going to be fun. This, this project's going to be fun as we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Or maybe we won't. So I uh, got a few pallets laying around here. Um, just getting them together. This one's not done. A couple of 65-volt parts. Definitely not done. Ain't even wired up yet. I want some opinions. What do you guys think? Is this stupid? Stick with the big tubes. Am I dreaming? Am I crazy? Am I nuts? Or am I right? 